Good morning, Bruins fans. Uh, I guess it's never too early to hug it out. I'm recording this at 6.42 in the morning because, oh boy, I did not want to record this at uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Look when there look when there are two instances where you uh, where you blink and half the uh, and half the uh half the period is over uh, because you're so tired uh, that's the that's a sign that you got to that that's a sign that the recording's got to happen in the morning and not in the night and not after the game but uh Bruins win this tilt 5 to 2 against the uh, against the LA Kings, uh, I gotta be honest is uh, is definitely kind of a uh is definitely kind of a grittier win. wasn't exactly one that, uh, yeah, I mean it was one I was expecting to win, but I didn't expect it to be, uh, but I expected it to be a little bit easier than uh, than the way it happened. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're probably thinking. What do you mean? It's five. It was five two. You won by more than double the. You won by more than double theirs. Even taking that, uh, even taking that, uh, freaking empty netter out of the equation, you still double them up. I mean, hell, for most of the first period, we were we were outplaying the the uh the Kings, Kings, and yeah, all of those are fine, fine points. It was a good game. I'm not gonna deny that, but. And there was one component that was missing that could have turned this from a good game to a great game. And we all know who he is. We all know what happened. Jake DeBrusque, he is going to be out for the next six weeks, weeks or so. He was on LTIR, recovering from a broken fibula that he suffered during the during the Winter Classic. And now on the one hand, I can be impressed that that man and scored two goals on it. Two goals in the Winter Classic on a uh, on a broken leg. On the other hand, he's now out for a good amount of time. So with the perfection line back in uh, back in play, which hasn't played so perfect, uh, and Phoenix Copley on a, a seven game win streak, uh, you could see why I was uh, I wasn't expecting this to be uh, the easiest of games. Anyway, first period puck drops and. And right at the bat, we get eight uninterrupted minutes of uh, of play. They they are just uh, nobody wants to do. Uh, people want to play the game, and they want to play it clean. And it it, it turns into eight minutes of uh, of back and forth uh, where uh, where the Bruins are definitely outplaying the the Bruins are definitely outplaying, but the Kings are uh, but. You know, Adrian Kempe and Blake Lazard are, are still getting their, their their looks. But the third line tonight was the third line tonight was un was undeniably our best uh, line. We ended up getting, uh, we end up, uh, I mean, Felino, Coyle, and Frederick. You can't tell me that uh, that any of them had had a bad game. I feel like the closest that you can uh, say is that Coyle probably could have. Have played a little bit better, but I mean that's uh, I mean hindsight is trying to try on that one. But despite the amazing shifts from the uh, from the third line, the rest of the uh, team does not uh, exactly the rest of the team does not exactly fall. Uh, the the rest of the team does not exactly I follow. Oh, their example. I'm going that that pun should not have taken three three freaking tries to get through the defense plays way too out of the way too out of position and and Alex Iafalo is able to wrap around the on the back of the net for Philip Deneau who's just right at the right at the far post to just tap it into and to put the Kings up one nothing before the end of the period and what's and I mean Jeremy Swayman had an overall decent night, especially because the Kings wildly outshot the Bruins. And I mean, but he did have some pretty good saves, like that one 
and from uh, from Andre Kopitar and Quentin Byfield. Oh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one that's uh, that's one that I don't really blame on him. That's that's defense. You got to be in position. Oh, it's worse is just before the end of the period. I think someone takes a penalty on, uh, someone takes a penalty on the uh, uh, on the Kings. I for, I think it's Blake Lazat. Uh, I don't know. I forget. I forget. I was exhausted, and AJ Greer and Craig Smith just run into each other, and that kind of sums up the. Uh, the rest of the uh, first period after the, uh, after that, uh, Philip Dinell goal uh, is is the Bruins that once looked really good, especially uh, the one the Bruins that once looked uh, pretty good are now just running into each other. Second period was the first one that I uh, uh, that I like blinked in half of the you know, the games in half the periods over. So I uh, so. HL66.ir, thank you so much for for allowing me to stream the entire game and not just eh, and allowing me to go back. And uh what is it? Puck drops oops, and and not long afterwards, uh Martian just get and it's tripped right in front of a ref and it does not get called. Does not get called at all. So he is understandably pretty ticked off and uh, and he, he slams his stick on the side of the uh, on the sideboards and in the refs call him for unsportsmanlike conduct and there's plenty of things that you can say about uh, this you can probably say you can 100% say uh, say if he uh, if Bergeron's retiring at the end of the season you could uh, the last thing you want for uh, for someone who's pretty much the heir apparent to uh, to the uh, uh, to the captaincy, you pretty much mo- you want them to be able to keep their you know, keep their head level in a situation like this. But consider this, Cons- please consider the following. Maybe actually call the penalty, call the- call the penalty, may uh, call the penalty uh, for tripping. Maybe that maybe that would help. Anyway, the Bruins would get their revenge in, in two separate ways. First of all, they would kill the well, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and second of all, well, the well, the puck's about to go out, out of the about to go out of the king's zone, but Charlie McAvoy, oh my god, that dude is a brick wall on the blue line. And, and he keeps it in, he taps it forward to to Marchand, Marchand passes it to Bosnock, who's in, uh, who's in wide open space, yes, the way the way that this team makes mm. David Pasenak makes him invis- invisible is incredible. Pasenak blasted past Phoenix Copley eh, to put the Bruins up one nothing. Sorry, one one. About two minutes later, Blake Lazat ends up going for holding, and pretty much right off the face off, Mar- uh, Marchand uh, just blasts it, uh, and it ekes past. Is Copley for the uh, to put the Bruins up two one, uh, two one blasted on the far side. But the but not everything can, can go exactly according to plan. The and the Bruins end up uh, playing way too deep in their own zone, zone, which which is kind of which kind of you don't really see too often. You you normally see at least one or two people up up, uh, up near the blue line to facilitate the. It's passing, but no, all five guys are like at the uh, at the face up, uh, are like at the crease or lower, and uh, and it just allows Sean Dursey uh, to be in wide open space and uh, and set up a uh, a an easy one timer, and that I feel is something that Monty's going to have them practice and uh, practice next time. That's something like playing deep in your own own zone not even once that first one took a while i thought it uh, i thought i had it already clicked it but then we get oh man we get the we got one of the best parts of the uh, game that it pretty much turns the 
and turns the momentum on a dime. Freddy, who recognizes that Brendan Lemieux is sort of just uh, agitating people in the first period, and decides to drop the gloves with him in the second. And Brendan Lemieux knows that he's getting his ass kicked so much that he's uh, that he's pretty much hugging Frederick to uh, to uh, to prevent himself from getting his ass kicked even further. And like you can say, you can say a ton of different. Uh, you can say uh, that he was trying to uh, get closer into and uh, to hit to hit more. He's not doing that. He's just he is is clinging on for dear life on Frederick's sweater. And that pretty much changes the momentum right towards the uh, right back to the Bruins. And uh remember that insane save that's uh, that Allmark made that was right on the line a few uh, like a week or uh, like a week ago or a week and a, ink and a half ago. So I mean decides, yeah, I'm gonna pull those theatrics again. I'm gonna pull those th- those theatrics. Victor Arvids- Victor Arvidsson shoots it on net, and uh, uh, and Swayman uh, uh, Swayman's in the way. It deflects uh, it deflects and chips up uh, up and over him, and Swayman is able to uh, to stop it just right before it passes the is uh, the it breaks the plane. I know usually they save paddle save and emporium on Steve's hat picks for uh, for. You know, like actual shots that are getting being saved by the the stick, but this is but this is still a goal that's getting saved by the stick. I I want them to take a look at it. Anyway, third period puck drops, and yet again I am um, incapacitated for the first ten minutes, and uh, I think I had a nightmare during it. I had a nightmare. Why is that relevant? Because I'm back, baby. A two goal night for Frederick. The second, I think, I think the second one that he has had this season, and alongside the uh, the the home game against Colorado. Actually, no, it was the road game against Colorado. It's still, well, the the game against one of the games against Colorado. Oh, the other, and this is the second two goal game that Frederick's had this this season. And the first goal in one of the few. Showcases of uh, of four uh, of uh in one of the few showcases of offense that and I've seen in in Brandon Carlo do he shoots it on he shoots it uh, supposedly on net and and Fredericks it's just right there in, in the middle to tap it uh, to tap it in in and that ends up being the three two uh, the three two lead. And the second, and the second goal well, on another really productive shift from that, uh, from that third line. The uh, Nick Foligno goes behind the net and uh, and feeds uh, and feeds Frederick, who's uh, who's right on one of the wings, wings, and he just taps it in the, and he just blasts it in again for and to put the Bruins up four uh, two. And not only does that, uh, and not only is that his second. In two goal game of the season, it it also puts him at a career high nine goals already in the season. I know by game thirty eight you want to have more than nine goals usually, but but still for someone like Frederick, I think nine goals goals is exactly where he wants to be right now. I kind of want to see him push for uh, push for a twenty goal season. Kings pull Copley and uh, and Pasta just nails the empty netter going. Far down from uh, from the neutral zone, and that ends up killing the game five uh, five two. Now I gotta be honest with you guys: the game against the Sharks on Saturday is probably gonna uh, end up being exactly like this one, where I have to record it in the morning because the uh, because that uh, day I'm also going to the uh I'm also going to uh, to Frozen Fenway, and uh, <laughs> go UMass, go UMass. Anyway, this one isn't exactly one that I uh, was really in the uh, mood to uh, to care about, other than like the highlights. It's I know I probably should have cared more, but it was it was t- it was at ten. It started ten thirty one until one in the morning, and I was just I was tired. 
Girl, girls gotta sleep sometime. Girls gotta sleep. But anyway, that is gonna uh, do it for uh, today. Thank you all so much for watching. Down there is the like button. Right there is the uh, is the channel. Right up there is my most recent video. Down there is my Twitch.tv and the donation link to Tampa Bay Thrives. I will see you guys again on uh, on Saturday, probably Sunday. Take care.